you know, I came up in that era. That's 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 where I got my love for music. I had, I had a homeboy who like really pushed the music game on to me, and when I got on doing the promotional side of it, I was an AWOL writer, Sebo, Marvelous, all them cats. That's how I got on the game. I know what Bo was talking about. I seen it. You know, I know what Richie Rich was talking about. I seen it. What is going on with this young era game where it's all talk, no show? Like, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't telling nobody to go out and, you know, bust moves and do some illegal shit, but they talking about it like they did it and they didn't do it. How, how do you feel about that? I mean, you know what I'm saying? Everybody got their own story, man. You gotta let a nigga live his own script, you know what I'm saying? You gotta let a nigga live the, the script that he's writing, you know what I'm saying? Okay. At the part of the times, it's just a, it's a, a change in time. Back then when we was out there, we was young. Uh, the, get, the streets was fast. Motherfuckers was out there moving around. Uh, the game was different. Uh, we was really outside with it, you know what I'm saying? I remember back in the days when I was young, Nigga, when your mama seen you out to play, nigga, you don't come back to the street. Like, bring your ass back to the street like, come on. Nowadays, kids don't even leave the house. They're living their whole life cybernet. And it's cra- whole- when I knew that the world was fucked up and crazy is when one day I looked out on a Christmas day, it was no kids outside playing. You feel me? How weird is that? Hell, if my mama ever told me, you fucked up, you can't go outside and play today. Oh, my world is over. Man. You couldn't tell me that. Right. I've been noticing that. On Christmas and shit. There don't be no kids outside playing, riding their new shit. And we used to be out there with all our new shit on. Hell, <laughs> hell. We go back in chains. <laughs> like, like you see the other shit we got. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. But, uh. Fashion. It's just different. And the times has changed. They not, they don't have the same as ambitions as us. You know what I'm saying? Right. We were fighting for fame, respect, and, and, and greatness. <laughs> likes. They just strive for likes. You know? No. Damn. Them niggas just want to be famous. Right. Right. Yeah. So so now with you being a legend in your area code and, and across the area code all the way to Frisco town biz like Stockton like y'all was really out here stomping mud holes in towns. From that aspect of the game to today's aspect of the game, how have you changed up? Um, well, I just got a little older. Uh, my thinking is broadened. I got more topics to talk about. Um, I mean, shit. I survived it. I went to prison. Survived the street. Survived the rap game. Uh, ain't in no 360 deal. Got my rights back. Got my master's back. I mean, shit. Uh my story is pretty good. The script looking pretty good for me at this point. Right. I'm, I'm just still in it, trying to run my victory lap. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. Now you talk about how you had to go to college. I don't, I don't call it the pen. I call it college. Because when you go there, you're gonna learn something. Right. Because you're gonna learn some shit up in there. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. You're gonna learn that you weren't that motherfucker. Hey, you have to come. You're gonna come back out of two ways. You're gonna come back wise. And you're gonna come back stupid. That's facts. Yeah. That's facts. Now. Being the man that you are today, because I saw your picture on the gram looking real black Spartan like <laughs> in, in, in the Lompoc University, you oh, know, yeah. what would you say to yourself coming from the man you are today? Then, what would I say to my younger, yeah, my younger self? Yeah, because you, you was a monster back then, bro, like. You you, um, you you was you was a real monster. So what would you say being the wiser, more mature cat to the young cat who was standing on his business then? Just uh, save your money for one. Uh, move your money smartly. Um, be be careful because now in 2023, police is killing niggas for looking like that. You know what I'm saying? Back then, I mean they was back then too. But Rodney King was after that, but right. I'm just older now, like I say, I would I would watch the way I move, watch the way I handle my money, watch the way I handle my business, tighten up on some shit, take some opportunities that I missed in the past that I regret now, and just move smart. Okay. Follow your first mind. You know, okay. that little, that, that, that voice in your head ain't there for nothing. 
Right. That motherfucker trying to pull you. That's your navigation system. He right. trying to tell you. You hit that wrong, if that motherfucker tell you, make left here and you make right, nigga, that's on your ass. You know? That's fine. You have to deal with that. You have to spin, spin back around the block. So. That's facts. Yeah. A lot of cats make the mistake of not following their first thought and second yeah. guessing what they're saying and then they end up in the university. Yeah. But you know, we ain't, gonna, we, ain't gonna, we ain't gonna sit on that subject because that was the past. That was something that helped create the person that you are today. So we gonna right. talk about today. I don't run from my past at all. Oh. Man. That, you know, my past is what made me. So, I mean, shit, it's documented. It, it, it was, what now I say it was written, you know? Yeah, cats are talking about they regret doing. I'm like, okay, you can regret it, but that's what helped make you who you are today. I made a lot of mistakes. I did a lot of dumb shit, but it helped create who I am today, and I'm very proud of who I am and who I've evolved to become. So I know exactly what you mean by it. It helped. It was. It was written. So I get that. Now it was a lesson. Now. With technology, like we are dealing with today, on top of the hustle you already had, because you couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't get let your shoes stay clean being in the music game. You had to get out there and move in the dirt. Yes, sir. Do you still apply that kind of guerrilla marketing to what you do today, or are you strictly like switching over and finding the the ease and the 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 technology and? Maybe not as much being out on the street because it's not really too many avenues for a right. cat on guerrilla marketing to be out there doing this type of shit. Right. Well, like you say, ain't nobody really outside. You know what I'm saying? So I do a lot more internet promoting. Um, you know, I, I still be on the street. I still do shows. I still, you know, I still be out on the block and on the street. And, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Politics and shit. But as far as the game goes, you don't see a whole lot of street cats and street teams and shit out there. And our flyers and shit, putting up posters and shit like there was back in the days. They changed a lot of the laws too. You can't be out there like that doing that. You know what I'm saying? Everything is corporate, corporate corporation and shit now. Well, to be and honest, to be honest, we <laughs> to be honest, we weren't allowed to do it back then either. <laughs> back then, right? But now they can take this shit up. Yeah, I, I didn't hit they many fences. Right. I didn't hit many fences with boxes of posters moving. <laughs> but I mean, in order to. In order to the streaming thing is killing motherfuckers off. It's like a it's like a phantom currency. You know what I'm saying? A motherfucker you don't even know how many you got to sell to get your money. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's like it's like a it's like a lottery pick. Mm. You, you, might not, you might get a check, but motherfuckers need to figure out another way to make it physical again. I know CDs and tapes and all that shit is obsolete, but motherfucker got microchips and you got these scanner cards and you know what I'm saying? You can scan apps, shit and apps. Apps and all kinds of shit, man. Right. Right. So we just got to change the hustle, man. We got to, um, we got to figure out a new way to get it. Right, right. I was a video the other day. They were saying that music videos are becoming obsolete. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers is like big wigs in the music industry are saying that niggas is wasting their time shooting music videos nowadays. Now that's because crazy now, to hear. Yeah. Listen, uh, I forgot dude's name. I, I, if I find a video, I'll send it to you. But I watched that shit the other day. He was saying that um, that music shoot music videos is a waste of time because the average the average viewer it ain't like MTV and BET and shit is still popping. Ain't a lot of video outlet shows where you know what I'm saying. Right. Where they playing your videos. It's a lot of you just promote that shit on YouTube or on Instagram or on Facebook or whatever. And if only ten motherfuckers see it, then you know. Was it worth it? Right. He was saying, he was saying it's more. Back in the nineties, it was a consumer-based industry. Now it's a motherfucking promotional-based industry. It's a, a corporation-based industry. Mm. Everything is open something. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like they are using the artists for commercials. The artists are commercials now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Definitely know that. Uh. I got one of the cats who, I, who I've done an interview with before, M. Dot Taylor. He is beating me up trying to get up in, the, in this interview. M. Dot, hold on a second, man. Let me, let me get a few more questions out, then I'll bring you in, bro. 
Um, so now, you know, being in the game so long, going back to what made you start wanting to even be in the music business? Because this ain't no, what you do is not easy. Not at all. And, and, and a lot of cats, a lot of cats don't get that shit. So what was it? Who was it that that made you want to get into it? And then who made you better in the game? Because... Like I said, uh, you got longevity in this game, bro. When I was young, when I first started loving rap, it was like artists like Randy MC and LL Cool J mm. that I saw on TV. And, you know, moms would take me to one of their shows or something at the Oakland Coliseum or something. Mm. And just to see, to see them niggas on stage just with the mic commanding the whole crowd, all eyes on them and everybody's moving to they, every word. I wanted that power, you know what I'm saying? I felt that was powerful. And I wanted that shit for myself. So, you know what I'm saying? I used to be in the house, in the bathroom with my brush in my hand, sitting in the LL, in the motherfucking mirror with my Kango on, and my fake ass gold rope on the shit. I seen, you know what I'm saying? And I was practicing. It was like I was I was practicing. You know how youngsters practice hoop because they know they're going to be a basketball player? Right. I was practicing that shit because I knew what the fuck I wanted to do. Mm, and okay. um, I just wanted to be great like them niggas. You know what I'm saying? First it was first it was LL. Then Ice Cube came. And Ice Cube to the West Coast, gangster image into it. But he was just as powerful as LL. And the bitches was looking at him just like they was looking at LL. And the, the, But the difference was the niggas respected him a little bit more than LL. You feel right. what I'm saying? I feel that's Ice because they, they, we, we felt what Cube was saying because we were out here living what he was saying. You know what? Right. Right. We 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 love the music that LL and all the you know the pioneers on the East Coast were saying and, and doing. Change. Life changed for me and the time changed. Right. For the transition from it. Oh shit. Brush trying to send LL. <laughs> so when NWA hit me, I was on the block with the Lokes on, with the Derby jacket on, with the Raiders cap on, and I'm a Niners fan. <laughs> <laughs> That was, that was what it was. Yeah, you know that's really, that was that was the recipe. You had to follow it. The, the all black Dolphin Nikes, and, you know what I'm saying? The, where the black ones with the white swoosh. Yes, you know Lord. That's, that's what it was. Yes, Lord. I remember when I found my first pair of Cortezes. You couldn't tell me shit. <laughs> you, I was untouchable when I got my first pair. But Real you know, shit. It, it was more than just. For some, it was more than just the image of imitating what they saw. Like it was real lifestyle for some cats, and and I got lucky because when I was doing what I was doing, dumb shit, you know, I had the older cats telling me, "Go take your ass to the court. Go, 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 get the fuck up out of here." Like, and and I was blessed in that fashion. A lot of cats don't get that kind of. Well, today, for example. You don't have OGs. There's there's nobody saying, look, young bull, you don't need to be out here doing this or you need to go concentrate on that. There's no OGs really giving right. real game out here anymore. I don't understand why that is. Like, and that's are, weird. Yeah, like are the OGs scared of these young bulls now? What, what's, what's the problem? You know what it is? And I, that's weird as fuck because when I was young, all the niggas my age that I still fuck with is in good health. Niggas got good minds. Niggas ain't on no dope. Niggas getting their money. Niggas take care of their families. All my niggas that I rock with is on some, you know, on that grown man shit. Right. So I don't understand why. My opinion, the reason might be, is because these youngsters nowadays don't want to listen. They don't. They don't respect good game being spoken to them. When you try to speak good game, they comprehend that as you hating on them. You know what I'm saying? Mm, okay. And back when we was young. Nigga, you didn't have no choice but to accept the game. Nigga, if OG approached you and tell you, nigga, come here, let me holler at you. Nigga, you gonna walk over there and holler at that OG. You feel what I'm saying? Now you gonna listen to every motherfucking word that nigga say until he finished, and then he gonna dismiss your ass. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Nowadays, the youngsters ain't listening. This nigga, you talk to them, nigga, they doing this dog conversation. Nigga, they talking about some other shit. Right. It's like, damn, sit still, nigga, let me holler at you, nigga. Nigga, hold on, nigga. Process what I'm telling you. Right. And it's... You know, that's just my opinion. A lot of youngsters I fuck with, though, they listen, they soak the game up, whether it's on some street shit, whether it's some real life shit, 
or rather it's some some music shit, you know what I'm saying? Especially when it comes to the music shit, because they respect me. So everything I tell them, I'm going to tell them some real shit, because I don't want to steer them the wrong way. But I can only tell them from the knowledge that I have, you know what I'm saying? Right. A lot of this new shit, I'm not privy to myself, because, you know what I'm saying, I'm like the, I'm, I'm like the OG uh, Vito Corleone getting, getting out, you know, get, coming from college, and the whole motherfucking world has changed. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, what was that movie? America against when Frank Lucas walked out. Oh, yeah. And the whole motherfucking world, nigga, look around, nigga, the whole world is different. So, this whole world is different from the way we used to operate. Right. Back when we was doing the shit, especially the music shit, we had CDs, tapes, we had product to sell. So, we knew each each piece of product would calculate to this many of dollars. Mm-hmm. Now, this shit is like phantom numbers. It's like this shit in the internet. You know what I'm saying? You don't know, you don't know exactly how many you sold. You ain't sitting there with a counter going one string, two string, three string, four string. That shit is just calculating like the matrix. The numbers is going like this. You understand? And, you know, at the end of the period, end of the quarter or whatever, you got to wait and see what they tallied up and calculate and hopefully you get a check that quarter. <laughs> right. You now, know what I'm now, with everybody kind of waking up to like how Spotify and YouTube are kind of like, Paying pennies on the dollar for streams and shit. They pay a fraction of a penny. Now, a penny, a fraction of a penny. Now that that should that should help change up the way the game is, though. Like, if you know you're getting a fraction of a penny, like maybe 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 it takes like the OGs of the game to say, okay, we gonna go back in time and we gonna create real product. Like these streams is cool, but. Like if you don't have actual product to to put out, you you wasting your time, and maybe that's why you know, you know, because a lot of these major labels were looking at cats who had millions of followers and millions of streams on their video, but niggas was figuring out like I can buy followers and I can buy these these streams and shit. So now the labels ain't even trusting that shit now. It, it's crazy, like. You have a blue check on your Instagram account. That don't mean shit now, cause niggas was buying checks. So, yeah, that's it. so what is it going to take for the music industry to be like? Either we need to figure out a way of selling USBs, uh, thumb drives, and, and mail it out, or see go back to the CD game. Like, what? What? Cause like even Ice T, you know, he 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 came up with an idea. He created. Well, he just put out an album. It was a three album. And he was talking about this is what the game is missing because there's no artwork. You don't get to put that, you know, who produced the what and where and what studio. Like, and I, I was listening to him talking. Like, I used to go out and get the records and the CDs, and I would read all that shit because I wanted to know where he was at and how he was moving. Like, like to get to go when you go into the studio. If you went to somebody's studio session and you was bullshitting, you would damn near take your life in your own hand. Because that studio shit cost. Niggas run your ass out of there. You had to get the fuck out if you weren't about your business. And it's sick now because if you got a laptop, some foam on a closet, and a microphone, you can record your whole motherfucking album now. Well, single because they don't put out albums no more. See, and that's, that's what it was. See, think about it like this in street terms. The Kingpins was the nigga, that, the nigga that had all the dope and who all the niggas had to go to get the dope from. Now, in these days, sometimes everybody got dope. Everybody got dope in their house. Everybody got cookers and te- uh, triple beam scales and shit in their room. They making dope from the bedroom. And then take that shit package up, throw that motherfucker right on SoundCloud, throw that motherfucker right on YouTube, throw that motherfucker right on, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So now, Back then, it took me, or it took us, we had to record the song. We had to go mix the song. We had to go master the song. Then we had to go press the singles up. Then we had to go do the artwork. We had to take the cover. We had to get the art, the, the motherfucking cover made. It was at one point, we had to get the cover made at one point, take all the motherfucking press over to the motherfucking manufacturer and let them package it up for us. You feel what I'm saying? You had so to put in that footwork. Now, now is you can do that shit for yourself. You don't even need artwork. You just put a picture. Niggas got Photoshop on their laptop. These youngsters, is, they, it's weird as fuck because 
this is the, the most tech savvy the youngsters has ever been in history, but it made them lazy and it made them um, anti-social right. as far as physical. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They'd be on, they be on Instagram live, nigga talk about what they'll do to a bitch and pipe a bitch down, yada, yada, yada. And then you go to one of these young house parties and everybody on their motherfucking phone. The girls is on one side of the room, the niggas on one side of the room, and everybody on their motherfucking phone on live doing crazy, this. Crazy as hell. That's crazy as hell, but that's the real talk on that situation. Yeah. That little, the little rapper bras, the, these little, I be, you know, I listen to rap. I'm a fan of rap, so I listen to everything. These little rapper bras nowadays talk that freaky shit about how sexy red and all them Sukiana and all them talk about that old what they'll do to a nigga and all that, right? The one little young bra, she on the motherfucking award red carpet. Oh boy, walk up behind her and grind up on that ass like that bitch turned around like she was totally violated. Like how dare you? I ain't never. He looked at her like, <laughs> ain't you the one saying your pussy whole pink and your booty whole brown? Right, right. And then, and the booty, I'm on your ass like this, bitch. You tripping? Wow. So it, it it's kind of like are these bitch are these bitches studio hoes? Are they just freaks in the studio? <laughs> Cause most of these females is telling your girlfriend to break up with you. They got a man and a husband at the house. Cardi B's and all oh, them bitches got husbands and shit at the house. But they telling your girl that you ain't shit to leave you. Man, and and <laughs> that that I don't get that shit. But I don't I don't understand why some of that shit is so popular. Like, is the attention span in this new era like that short? Like, I don't get it. Well, what it is is, and it's always been this since the beginning of music history. Females buy records. That females is, we that buy the records. I used to call it the she market. Yeah, Eighteen to thirty-five, white, Latin, Asian, whatever the case may be, female always female, buys. Bro. Female support. Females think you can buy your shit. Yep, and will buy it for their girlfriend. Yeah, right. So now in the market. The female rappers are smart. They tapped into that. So now, you know what I'm saying? That, that's, they, they, they tapping into what the females like. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, in the club, uh, giving the nigga for his bread, Birkin bags and Gucci and uh, Balenciaga and Prada and all the shit. And, you know, uh, you know all the shit. Right. Michael Kors and all the shit. Right. So all they doing is they just being braggadocious in the females since they bragging about shit that bitches like. Now we just brag about shit that niggas like chains, cars, bitches, woo woo. They just bragging about shit that bitches like. And bitches is the consumer. So that's how a bitch like Ice Spice and Cardi B and Megan Stack and I'll sell uh, uh, Kodak Black and whoever right. is because it's more bitches that's tuned into what this bitch talking about than to what you talking about. Hmm. Okay. Bitches don't. A lot of bitches don't like to just sit there and listen to a nigga talk about drinking lean and getting so ripped he can't even fuck all day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they want they try to get that thing bust open too. <laughs> right. Right. Hey, why you see two shorts so successful? That nigga's not a lyrical genius. That nigga ain't advanced, and that nigga sell platinum every time. Because the bitches like that shit he talking. He talking that shit, and they like to get that shit beat down. Yes, Lord. Oh, I, I used to see Carlos and bitches bumping two shirt right down the street, bumping two shirt all day. But on the TV, they talk about protesting and see Dolores Tucker protesting and talk about we disrespect women. But all I see is a car full of females riding around bumping this shit too. Bumping freaky tails. Hell <laughs> <Damn> straight. <laughs> Shout hey, out Snorri. Hey, that, that platinum, that wasn't a million niggas that bought that shit. Damn, so no, no, it no. wasn't it wasn't a thousand niggas because we was burning and borrowing. <laughs> Telling that shit for my baby mama. Right. Oh, new t-shirt. Let me see that real quick. And be, gone for, whole, day, yeah. be gone for the whole be gone for the whole day. <laughs> you better go to Tower Records with that shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, like, hey, where my CD at? Shit, I, oh, I don't even know. <laughs> here, here, show you. Here, go grab another one here. That's fact. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, Females in the line at them in stores when you sign when these artists be signing autographs, be lines of females falling right. out and fainting in the street. Right. There ain't no niggas out there falling out like that and starstruck jumping and can't breathe and shit when the nigga sign an autograph, put her name on it and 
you know what I'm saying? Well, now there might be, cause. <laughs> well, man, right. Now there yeah, might be, like cause. You got people like Drake and them that might make a nigga fall out or something. Yeah, and these niggas, like, I don't, I don't get it. I, I see these niggas walking around with these name brand. <sighs> they purses. These niggas is walking around with purses, like it's, yeah. like it's real, like. But when you got them cats walking around with purses, and now you got cats rapping about taking all these drugs, and I sit back and I'm listening to what you used to say in the music, and Bo used to say in music, and Rich, and 40, and all these other, like, we was the cats selling that shit because we wanted the gold things, and the car, and the clothes, and the jewelry. But these cats is putting in the music game about how they didn't took this bottle of pills, this bottle of lean. Like, when did they become cool to become dope fiends? And they can't blame it on Future. Because Future no. talks no, about that shit, that but shit. Future ain't took a motherfucking pill in his <laughs> life. Not that shit. Um, well, like I say, it's, just a, it's a change in time, bro. Back when we was growing up, the, the, the neighborhood kingpins with the heroes, you know what I'm saying? Facts. The, the nigga from my block that was balling was my heroes. That's what we was looking up to. And some, somehow the dope fiends became these niggas' heroes. Somehow, right? I don't know. I don't know where that. I don't know where it came from, bro. It flipped. You know it saying? flipped. Now I don't know what. Yeah. But we came. Like I said, we came from the era where. Because think about like the seventies, eighties, to the nineties. I'm. A, I grew up in the nineties era. Late eighties, all through the nineties. From the seventies, it was the pimping era. The right. Pimps was the heroes. Niggas with the big Cadillacs and perms. And, Colorful suits and furs and all that shit with the heroes. Transform to the eighties. Niggas with the with the with the, with the sweatsuits and the big gold ropes and the Adidas with no shoestrings and with the gazelle glasses and the rings on every finger. Then became the heroes. You know what I'm saying? Transform into the two thousands. The nigga with the with the with the sports jerseys with the bag and jeans and the do rag on and the chain zone and the, you know with the you know then became. The neighborhood heroes. Mm -hmm. Somewhere from the 2000s to the 2010s to the 2020s, it it went. The heroes is like Ludo Uzi Vert in them now. They niggas dressing like vampires and shit. You know what I'm saying? And you know they dress like the world class record crew and shit. <laughs> the niggas dress like the world class record crew, right? Right. Like the straight thing came about of that. Right. <laughs> but I mean, I don't know, bro. You know. It's sick. Oh, no. It's sick. Okay, so so <clears throat> we we gonna get off that. We gonna stop judging. So you in the studio right now putting in some work. So okay, that's, sure. that means we finna I'm get. Like, <laughs> fuck with it. We got the we got the the two K on the screen. You know what I'm saying? All my niggas. You know what I'm saying? We rolling. You know what I'm saying? They record on the phone. You know what I'm saying? We up in the air. Okay. Okay. So so. You've been doing music for many moons. If you still in the studio now, that means you up to date on this shit. Yeah. Where are you getting your 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 yeah. music? Who's doing your production of your beats now? Cause your shit still slap, bruh. Uh different people, you know what I'm saying? I just I just go by, you know, I got a different uh team of producers that I fuck with. Okay. And I just, you know, I just go with, with what catch my ear, you know what I'm saying? Um most of the time. <clears throat> Um, if I link up with a producer, have him send me some beats, and I'll bring him to the lab, to the wolf pack, and we'll sit down and listen to him, and we'll decipher him, you know what I'm saying, go through him and see what's, what we want and what we don't. Okay. Um, but it's just a lot of different producers, a lot of old, a lot of young producers, a lot of younger producers, a lot of, you know, a mixture of older and younger. Just whatever's hot, you know what I'm saying? Okay, okay. You say you make beats, and they let me hear what you got. Right. Because everybody say that shit, but you, everybody can't do that shit. Now, would you still pushing this music game? Are you doing your own label now, or or? No. So so coming. So being from being on the label to progress into running your own label, what what is some of the wisdom that you use from then to now to kind of like really? I don't want to say keep it under control, but. You know, be able to 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 make all the moves like chess pieces. Like, be real methodical with your moves. Like, how do you how do you do that? Because 
running a label and being an artist, that's that's no easy feat. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, we came in this shit with a plan from the beginning, you know what I'm saying? Um, when our first executive producer, Michael Washington, first started Recipes Mike D, he had this shit already mapped out. And he shared with us the blueprint. So we already knew what we wanted to do. Um, we just need to learn, we just need to know the steps and the people to rub elbows with to make it happen. But we already had the plan and focus already in debt. After he got murdered, that blew through a, uh, a, a, a monkey wrench in the, in the program. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But we still had the blueprint. We just, when he died, the funding, the backing to the dream died. You know what I'm saying? Right. But we was lucky enough to find somebody else that he was close to and we all was close to that understood what he was trying to do and understood the dream too. So he picked up where Mike D left off and we recorded direct from the back streets. Um, we needed distribution. We started going to music people, which turned out to be in records, start getting distribution from them. And we started seeing that um, to be to, the reality of it, well, we were selling a lot of units, making a lot of money. But we wasn't prepared for all the work and the shit that came with it. You got to constantly order CDs because back then it take two or three weeks for your CDs to come. Right. And if if your shit is in demand and the record stores demand your shit and it ain't on the shelf, they gonna buy something else. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> so we had to figure out. We just had to figure out the right avenues and the right people to fuck with to get the shit that we needed done. We still had the vision. But after a while, this shit got out of hand because the units was moving so fast. Like I said, we couldn't meet manufacturer demands. Mm. The only reason or the main motivating reason we signed them in a records was for one, for their manufacturing, because we know they had their own manufacturer. So it'd be a nonstop supply of CDs on the shelf okay. that we ain't got to wait two or three weeks for, you know what I'm saying? And two, um, we needed that distribution. You know what I'm saying? We needed to get the CDs out there. You know what I mean? And um, what a plus, what was the plus in the deal was not only was we getting distribution and manufacturing, we was always getting we was also getting promotion because now that we signed to the label, they had a vested interest in the you know they had an investment in the project mm -hmm. because it's on their label. Right. So now they got to provide promotion. So not only did we get distribution <laughs> and we got manufacturing, we also got promotion. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, which at the time was a plus plus for us. And if if the if the money split was a little more, uh, what's the word I'm trying to find? Uh, we'll say more it, in your favor. <laughs> it, right. It, it would have worked. It would have pursued. We could have went. You know, we could have. You know, that could have been the next ruthless record. So that could have been the next priority. That could have been the next no limit. You know what I'm right. saying? I mean, you got to think that totally insane RBA or Dre Dog, IMP Cool Nut, Andre Nicotina, a fucking Pooh Man. Peters. I mean, come on, dog. You know what I'm saying? If we could have kept that roster for the next decade, nigga, we could have been like Death Row. We could have been like, you know what I'm saying, Bad Boy. We could have been like Ruthless. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. A roster from niggas from different cities Frisco, Oakland, East Palo Alto. You know what I'm saying? You got niggas from different cities that making great music at, at a time consistently and, and simultaneously. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, if if he could have kept the, the music split um, a little more fair, then it could have went further. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm sure if you ask Black C, Black C's still doing uh, interviews and shit. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he'll say the same thing. Right, right. But in our case, we was getting everything that we was looking for out of them. You know what I'm saying? And... <clears throat> We only signed for a three album deal. So, um, and the third, three album with a, a fourth option. And, um, but the, the fourth option is in our favor, you know what I'm saying? Because the second, the second album was in their favor, you know what I'm saying? Because we brought them direct from the back streets. Okay. Um, that was an album that we had already produced ourselves and brought them to finish product. Right. The second album on the same was going to be the first product that we produced with them you know what i'm saying that we made mm -hmm. from scratch 
with them. You know what I'm saying? I mean, even though we doing all the music, all the work, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. We, we cooked it up on their label as far as, as opposed to us bringing our finished products in them and just saying, here, nigga, put this up. Um, or here, just promote this. And then we signed on once that shit blew the fuck up. Then we signed on to, they took over where mm-hmm. we left off. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but, uh, so with you finding the necessity in signing to somebody, with it being so much easier now to do those kind of things as far as distribution and getting the word out, like, you know, like Empire. Empire is a one button everywhere. Yes. How, That's what I'm distributed through. Okay. So, so do you understand what I'm saying? So is it necessary for somebody to get on with something like Empire or... Should they do it themselves and work their way up to Empire? Because Ghazi ain't no fool. He ain't finna sign no bullshit that ain't gonna work. So, do do are these cats having to do the same the same footwork? Because your footwork was done earlier. So, are these young cats today do do they do they understand that footwork has to be done? The work has to be proven before you can walk into something like that, or are they just. Or is that just, you know, they think they're entitled and that's what they should do. Like, I don't get it. But how does that, that come from being an operator and an owner of a label? Well, footwork nowadays is different. Because the world is different. Everybody living on their phones now. Back when we was a nigga in the 90s, we was living on the block, on the corner, on the street, in the car. You know what I'm saying? At the homie house, we chilling, hanging out barbecuing. It was more social back then. Nowadays, everybody on their phone. And you got to think, nowadays, everybody got Pro Tools in their house, in their room. You know what I'm saying? Everybody making music, everybody putting out music. It's a certain, it's a, it's an over flood of music and not enough customers. If everybody a rapper, who the fan? Who listening to this shit? Right, right, right. You go to shows, everybody at that motherfucker rap. Okay. <laughs> Even niggas in the crowd rap. Facts. So it's like back when LL and Ice Cube and NWA and it was great, it was a separation between the artists and the fans. They was the artists and niggas was the fans, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And you know, and so forth and so on. And as, and as the game grew, it became more artists. Each artist started their own label, started signing other artists. And now it's like, you feel what I'm saying? And now it's. I'm not going to say oversaturated. Because it's music, you know what I'm saying? Music can, you can, music can never, you know, it'll never buzz, it'll never overflow, you know what I mean? So, but the game has changed. The way the game operates has changed. Um, the, the, the music industry itself has changed because what they're doing now is the game is resetting, you know what I'm saying? The game is resetting. It's going back to the basics now to where motherfuckers are going to have to get out there and Motherfuckers face, motherfuckers gonna have to go out there and do shows. Motherfuckers gonna have to go out there and get on stage and really show what they got. Because it's so many motherfuckers that you have to give me some. You know, so you have to give me some more than just a record, nigga. There's right. a thousand records on YouTube I can listen to. But if I come to your show and you rocking, and I come to your show and you sing some shit I ain't heard before, I'm like, oh shit, nigga, what's that? Mm. Now you got a fan. Now you got another sale. <laughs> you got another stream or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we just gotta figure out how to. First of all, we got to figure out how to create a product that we can control. Because the stream, we don't control the streams. We don't know. We don't know what that is. That's that Dr. Strange magic. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We don't know what that shit is. So we got to create something that we can say, "Nigga, I'm getting ten dollars for this. I'm getting five dollars for this right here." You know what I'm right, saying? Right. Right. And then, if, nigga, I sell a hundred of these. Nigga, I got five hundred dollars. You know what I'm saying? Thousand dollars. You feel what I'm saying? Completely. Whereas, nigga, you get a thousand streams. White on the stream count. Shouldn't one stream count as a sale? One stream should count as a fucking sale. Nigga, nigga well, I gotta do a ten thousand of these motherfuckers to get a dollar. Why? Why my song is is worth less here than here? You feel what I'm saying? Now, suppose if an artist of today, well, we'll we're gonna say this. Let's say A.D. Capone, because. You've lived through the era of sniping and doing flyers and getting out there. Suppose if an artist incorporated the guerrilla marketing of old 
with today's work, as far as everybody being on the phone, do you think that could be a, a, a winning move, or would that be yeah, a waste of time? Guerrilla market on the internet. Guerrilla market on these apps. Guerrilla market on these websites, on these social medias and shit. Yeah, but it's then you have these anti-social people who don't even know how to talk to people. So are they going to be able to talk to their fans even on direct message or on a live like we're doing tonight? Like, they, they don't get it. It's like, these motherfuckers are hermits. No, these niggas are tuning in. They'll tune in and watch. Okay. They'll tune in and watch. Yeah. Um, some of them will come in and the little thing, they get theirs off at the bottom, you know what I'm saying? Um, niggas is interactive. They just interactive in a different way. They ain't outside like we used to be. We was interactive in the world, on the street, on the block, outside. They just interacted in, in on this. Mm-hmm. In the house on this right here. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I mean, a motherfucker, Drake can drop a song right now. No posters, no promotion, no radio play, nothing. Drop that shit, Larry. Right hey, I just dropped that shit. And by tomorrow, that motherfucker will have 10 million views. Yep. And he gonna get a check for that. Because he he, he gonna get a check, check for that because he broke the internet because he riled up the motherfucking Instagram. He riled up YouTube or whatever the fuck platform is on. And he gonna get a check for that. So, as an artist nowadays, you gotta figure out how to get a buzz like that, how to get your shit so hot that you can drop whenever the fuck you want and that shit niggas is going, whoa, shit! Okay, gotta, okay. Gotta come with that shit, you know? Okay, so... If we talk about coming with that shit. What you working on in the studio, bro? Like, when when we gonna get it? When we gonna get a dose of this new AD Capone? Well, I've been dropping. That's my well, I know, I know you've been dropping, but you in the studio, so that means there's something new getting ready to come out. So I want to know about the new shit. We loading up to two, we loading up to 2024 clip, man. Okay, okay. 2024, right around the corner. It, it really we is. Next, we loading up the clip for next year. You know now, are you going to be out in the streets doing some shows with this, too? Are you planning on that, or? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I've been doing shows. Um, I got a show, matter of fact, coming in a couple weeks, October 13th. Uh, me, Looney's, RBL, Drew Down, Total Devastation, Selsky, uh at the Bay Riders Motorcycle Club, San Francisco, man. That's going to be a... Man. That's going to be one of the joints, man. That roster sounds crazy. Yeah, buddy. Oh. Bay Riders Motorcycle Club, San Francisco, October. I think it's the thirteenth. It's a Saturday, October twelfth or the thirteenth. I think thirteenth, something yeah, like that. You gotta send me that flyer. I'm gonna have to push that Tony out. Insane, RBL, Selsky, Loonies, Drew Down, Total Devastation. Man, that lineup so, right there has got man hits. Oh man, you missed it about two weeks ago. So old brothers had. Sebo, RBL, Spice One, Be Legit. See, I'm going to have to call Bo because that means he was out here. I'm going to have to call Bo. All the posters I done put up a Bo. Like, I, I need, when you come out here, bro, I need I need to see you, hug you, shake your hand, something, bro. Like, Bo's still in the lab, too. He working on new shit. Bo is going to always I, be. You on that new duffel bag mob album I just dropped. I dropped a, uh, I got a new group called the Duffel Bag Mob. Okay. And, uh, we dropped our album September 1st, shit, this month, a couple, couple weeks ago. And uh, we got a song there with Bo called War, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And the album hot. The album hot. Now, Kendrick. my question to you is, <laughs> how come I don't have no DJ packs of this new album, bro? Like, I'm going to need, I'm going to need my, my hookup. I got, I got you for sure. I'm going to need that. I got you. I got you. That's easy to do. Now, when you come into Sacramento, bro, because I have a chair sitting next to me. The technology is cool. It is an honor being able to talk to one of the cats who I used to, who I used to struggle to try and get y'all, I don't even want to say it, but get that motherfucking tape and CD. Like, <laughs> like I, I need that visit. I'm going to need you to slide up in here one time and sit down Mind with me, bro. It's good. We Mind have to up. do that. Now, let's, right go ahead, let's, let's go ahead and get back on this duffel bag, like, yeah. If you run your label, who's these artists that you have on, on your label now? Who 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 you got that's ready to take over? My man right here, D-Dow. Okay. Shout out D-Dow. What's up, bro? What's that, man? that man concentrating. I ain't mad at you, bro. <laughs> you know, that shit, you know, he, you know, he, you know, he fucking with it. 
My nigga Gooch, Gooch Smokes is in the house. My man TP right here. What's up, you bro? My man Gucci Smoke went in the house. But yeah, I got a I got a nice lineup, man. Shout out to my man Buff. Shout out to my man Stag Mod is still in the in the building. Shout out to the Gambler. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Famous Rogue. Shout out to Mr. Kiwi. Uh man, we got a nice little we got a nice little camp over here. Man, so Duffel Back is really just to to kick off to let motherfuckers know what we're working with. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just to let motherfuckers know that we we still here, we still in the building, and we coming with that shit. So all y'all out there watching, you go check out that the duffel bag mob till the wheels fall off, man. For sure. We hot right now too. We got now, some bangers on. Now the name AD Compone carries motherfucking weight in this game. Now, is it are you looking for the OGs to come back to come and be on the album? Because a lot of OG artists is like kind of fed up with the bullshit that's been going on. And they saying, like, yeah. I need to come back and do this? Or yeah. are you looking for that young cat that's like, okay, you're you're a unicorn. You don't belong in the herd with the rest of these motherfuckers. Come on over here. And let's 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 really put your talents to test. Well both. I mean shit. Both. I just I'm I i do not to me, age, race, none of that shit, sex, that shit don't matter to me. As long as you hide, you come up with that shit. Then you know what I'm saying, I'm fucking with it. You know what I'm saying? You could be a female, you could be a man, you know what I'm saying? You could be young, you could be old, you could be white, Asian. Man, I got man, you know what I'm saying? My my the the uh my musical family is diverse. Okay. My my man, you know what I'm saying? I got my man J B from San Mateo, he Asian. I got my man Checkmate Checkers from East Palo Alto from Midtown Alberta, he Mexican Mexican. I got my man, you know what I'm saying, shit. I got my man uh uh, uh high def. He white. That boy got gas like a gas station. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I've never, I've never been um, prejudiced in no type of way. I just like hot shit. You know, you got that shit, nigga. I'm fucking with it. That that's what hip hop, hip hop was created for everybody. Right. You know it was created by blacks. Don't get it twisted. It's created by blacks, but it was created for everybody in the projects. It created everybody in the ghetto to to, to something for everybody. You know what I'm saying? And whoever, whoever, if you, nigga, if you got that gas where I'm from, nigga, we used to be on the playground, nigga, in the circle, in the slice, spitting them bars, and that little nerdy looking white kid jump in the middle, and that nigga got bars. <laughs> How facts. you gonna deny it? Facts, that, facts. That little Asian kid you thought was slow, that could speak English, jump up in that motherfucker, get to spitting that shit. How you gonna deny that? That's real, That's real talk. That's real talk. Everybody. So, um, uh, you are, yeah, the ace uh, thing, I, I ain't tripping, man, because I'm damn near 50 myself, but I still, I'm still in it. I'm still fucking with it. You know what I'm saying? The youngsters might not fuck with it. The youngsters might not listen to it. But, nigga, the niggas my age gonna smile that shit. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, right. at the so family barbecues and on the long trip with the family when they riding in the van and they bumping that ass upon them. Now, I got a potential three or four more other fans sitting in the back seat. Said, hey, Dad, run that song back. I like that one. Fair. You feel me? Fair. Dad, what's that one? Remember we was on our way camping? What was that little album you was playing? Oh, this was old school acapone. The same boy, you don't know about that. Google it. <laughs> and when they Google it, they don't. <laughs> and when they Google it, they don't like them. Right. Some of them like, oh, oh, that little beat right there is woo woo. You feel me? Mm. That's how it got me. Nigga, my mama was. Nigga, I, I got on to rap. My mom used to be, she used to have these little get-togethers. Oh, they they used to have their little parties. And, like, I remember they used to have these Christmas parties. And they used to put on the Curtis Blow Christmas rap. Remember that shit? Hell yeah. Nigga, that shit was <laughs> sick as fuck. Hell yeah. That shit was sick as fuck. Had to, I, well, I remember having to sneak to hear some hip-hop songs, but that shit was, blew my mind when I heard it. <laughs> And then you then it, and as the years went by, then fucking Sugar Hill Gang came with the Rapper's Delight. And then Red DMC came with the, you know what I'm saying, whatever they first little shit was. Right. And then it started growing like, LL came with the I Need Love, and it was like, oh, your mama, oh, my nigga, my mama love that song. So, of course, I had that single for sure. Right. So, you know what I'm saying, the, the music is, is, uh, music is universal. You know what I'm saying? 
you got little kids that's five, ten years old know who Michael Jackson is. That works with Michael Jackson like we used to love that nigga. Right. You feel me? Right. So, yeah, but does man. that does that work in our favor? Because you know, it's still those people out there that still want to say the music that we're putting out is influencing these kids in a wrong fashion. I mean, yeah, that's a possibility because they were, that's the same shit they were saying that's when we were shut. So yeah, it's a possibility, but um, I feel that being an artist myself, if that shit is real, the First Amendment said I got the right to say it. Now, if my shit is too harsh for your kid to listen to, maybe that nigga need to go listen to Drake or something. You know what I'm saying? You know, Thanks. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna change my life story or um, my thought pattern or my feelings to accommodate you and your kids. You know, if, if your kids can't listen to this shit, just like back with Two Live Crew and them, they was putting stickers on Two Live Crew records. If if my mama felt that that wasn't some shit that she wasn't listening to, nigga, I wasn't listening to that. Nigga, you better get something else. Oh, too loud, crew? Nigga, they got naked bitches on the cover. Nigga, nah, nigga. You better get that Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince over there. <laughs> or nigga, you better grab that motherfucker. We can sneak and get that NWA. Right. And, and she stuck across us listening to that like, nigga, what is that? Right. I'm like, nigga, that's NWA. That's the shit, moms. Everybody listening to that. That's fact. And then she got curious. She started taking me to the concert, me and my brothers to the concerts. Mm. And... She didn't. She she didn't agree with the music, but once she was in the concert and when Easy and them was on stage doing that shit, she seen how the crowd was rocking and niggas was singing that word and niggas was dancing. And the girls was bending over, busting that shit open. She was like, "Oh, this shit moving these kids like mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? These kids like this shit." Mm-hmm. So she said one time it was par- Parliament Funkadelic. Facts. She remember my grandmother getting on her about the shit she was wearing to the Parliament Funkadelic concert, girl. You gonna go out there looking like that? So. <laughs> That's real facts. <laughs> so just come around, you know what I'm saying? Now it's, the, the like we say, the, uh, the the Sexy Reds and the, the Cardi B's and the Nicki Minaj. My my daughters is of that age to where they out there in the club busting open and they going out the front door with half naked with the things hanging out you know, oiled up with the legs shining. Uh-huh. Now I'm going through that, and I'm like, uh, uh-uh. 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 <laughs> baby girl, I love you to death, but if you don't go inside and change your clothes, girl, what you doing? <laughs> but when it was my turn, nigga, nigga, there wasn't no fun with the rabbit hat, nigga. You know what I'm right, saying? right. When it was That's... my turn, nigga. It was nigga. Tell your daughter to come out. We out. Mm. Tell your daughter to come out. We out. Now, <laughs> that's got to be a real hard situation for you because you got to let them go and do what they got to go through and, and what's popular and be with their friends. But being a father from the era in the streets with the shit, like, do, do they sit up and be like, Okay, Dad, we, we believe it, we understand, we, we gonna change up, or they like, Dad, you gotta let us live our life. I, I let them do them. Okay. I know who they are. I know that. I understand. I, you know, I'm from the street. I'm from the hood. The girls play. Mamas no more, bruh. <laughs> oh man, everybody in the gym and everybody got the, the lace fronts and everybody got the nails and everybody got the you know what I'm saying? Everybody got the little thing. horse, them horse eye eyelashes and right. shit. <laughs> Small waist and big booties, everything now, so they figuring out how to get it. Right. Right. Living in a different time, you know what I'm saying? The, the mamas is looking 
just like the, the, the daughters. You can, right. Nowadays, you go to a party, you don't know who the daughter, who the mom. Facts. Real. That's real, 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 real 100% yeah. facts. When you was in grade school, in elementary school, your 50-year-old teacher don't look like the 50-year-old teachers now. 50-year-old teacher now, they're dead, bad, skin look tight, nigga, bad. Like, wow. Angela Bassett, 64, 65. Look how she looks. Like oh. Angela Bassett could walk into the room right now and, and knock down something. Everything. Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. Every nigga trying to look like, damn, who was OG? Even as, even as a young nigga, like, ooh, who was OG? Facts. She bad. Facts. I mean, real shit. That's real, yeah. that's real talk. So it's like, it, it, I mean, we living in a great time. Because a lot of shit is at our fingertips and a lot of shit is being freer to us now. And you'll probably see in the next couple of years, even the music game is going to change. It's, 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 it's a reset button being pressed. The major labels is panicking right now. Do yeah. you know, do you know there hasn't been a number one, there wasn't a number one single or album in hip hop. For most of the year, oh, Travis Scott just dropped this shit like last month. That was the first number one album on the charts in rap this year. So the fans are demanding something different. The fans, the fans want something else. And a lot of the fans, a lot of the OGs is taking off. Do you know a lot of the young fan, the young artists nowadays ain't even selling out their tours? Right. They have like, they, do you know? I don't. I, I don't want to name no names. I don't want to you know, start no funk, but a lot of these young cats wouldn't even sound like they tours. But these OGs, the LLs and the Ice Cubes and them, they were selling out arenas and stadiums and, mm-hmm. and the ticket master and billboard mm-hmm. recognized that like it's a, it's like a switch in the audience. It's like the, the audience is leaning more toward the older shit. Right. The classical shit. It's right. like, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. But, you know, I love this music game. I love the hustle. Like there, there's nothing else I really want to do. You know, I got my little day gig, but I can't wait to get up in here and and, and do these kind of things. Like, but for us not to have a number one hit in hip hop on billboards, that's really saying something. Like, it's almost like it's almost sad, but. We celebrated just a couple of weeks ago that hip hop turned fifty, right? And everybody was, "Oh, hip hop is fifty, and it's it's this and it's that." And I'm like, "Okay, what's going to happen a week after 50? And kind of what I thought, because you know, you had major companies, Sprite doing Nas and all these other rappers and Rakim, and you had hip hop is fifty B T commercials and. All this shit, like, okay, well, we turned 50. There's going to be a 51, but what about the time between? Can can we still be hip-hop is great in between time? Like, are we just going to be yearly? Let's really turn it out. Well, that right there should have been a, uh, that should have been like a, uh, a, uh, a reset start for everybody to say, all right, look, this is what we need to do. What was it in the beginning that made this shit so great? That made motherfuckers couldn't live without this shit to make this, make motherfuckers Shit. You know, do you. 
Don't try to sound like this nigga because that shit hot today. That shit might not be hot tomorrow. Then you gonna right. be stuck in that lane. Right. And you gonna look like a lane because you like that nigga shit. Facts. Real facts. So, nigga, do you. I tell any artist, nigga, fuck that. Nigga, do you. Listen to your team. If you got a team around you, they gonna guide you and polish you and make you sound right. But do you, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Facts. Real facts. Yeah. Spit that shit. Take it back to your team, man. Nigga, do what this shit sound like. Your real niggas gonna tell y'all, nigga, I think you should woo-woo. I think you should why ya If you got a yes, man, get rid of that nigga. Oh, yeah, nigga, yeah. Nigga, that shit hotter than Drake. Yeah, mm. nigga, that's gonna be the one. But your real homie tell you, nigga, that ain't the one, homie. Yeah, you got to take no. that back to the board, bro. <laughs> yeah, they might have to take that back to the board. Or just change that, or just do that, or just do that. You know? Keep your team that really love, love you around you. And, and because you can't do this shit by yourself, bro. Nobody can do this shit by themselves. A nigga needs somebody around with him to be like, hey, what you think about this? Hey, what you think about this? Hey, how this sound to you? You think I should, you feel what I'm saying? You need a real motherfucker that's with you that's going to be like, yeah, nigga, nah, that shit whack, nigga, get rid of that. But you should say that. You should use that. And that's how a lot of these, a lot of the real successful motherfuckers, they got that nigga in their camp. You know what I'm saying? They got that nigga and that real nigga that's gonna be like, nah, nigga, that shit ain't hot. Mm -hmm. And they gonna listen to that nigga. And he gonna, they gonna. You gotta move your phone around. The, the game is fucking with your Wi Fi. I got you back now. Passed away, I was like, that's where the end started. Yeah, it starts spiraling. And I understand that. Me and my mom is very close like that. And if something happened to her, I probably would I, I probably would go I, fucking nuts. I ain't gonna but be right. I would need them niggas. I would need them niggas that I'm talking about to grab me and be like, no, hold on, nigga. Nah, nigga, we gotta keep going, nigga. Let's go. Right. Nah, nigga. You feel me? Right. Grind right. the car, nigga, let's go. That's real let's go. talk. Time a nigga need that, and he don't have that. Jay Z was that, but whatever happened between him and Jay Z, Jay Z fell back like nigga, fuck you, you on your own. I ain't got nigga. We ain't fucking with you. <laughs> and he lost it. He just he didn't have nobody. They ain't backed up off of him. Everybody backed up off of him. Right. You know the niggas that really mattered. The niggas that he really respected. 
he had a lot of love and respect for Drake, but he just shit Drake and Drake back off like, ah, man, I'm cool on you. <laughs> the nigga was when the nigga started. He 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 when he said he was going to rewrite the Bible. That's when I was like, okay, this nigga is Looney Tunes crazy. Yeah, Looney Tunes crazy. But but behind trying to put his name in spots in the Bible and rewrite the Bible, his genius was still coming out because when he had the gospel choir singing and he was making the music right there on the spot, like, that shit is that crazy. Awesome. You know, the, the, the thing that I don't like about him is, I love him, I respect him a whole lot. I think he's one of the greatest producers and rappers of the game he's ever seen. Right. But the thing that 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 pisses me off about him is he's so infatuated with rich white culture that nigga if you really was a genius nigga you would know nigga create your own culture nigga do you know how many motherfuckers follow you and buy your records and buy everything that you put out in the Yeezys and all this weird looking shit that you be putting out you know how many motherfuckers support you what the fuck do you need to rock what do you need Gucci on your shit what do you why are you jocking these motherfuckers nigga you put out these Adidas shit and you became a billionaire so what the fuck do you need Gucci for? Nigga, Gucci need your blueprint. Nigga, Gucci ain't doing it like that nowadays. <laughs> right. <laughs> you feel me? Right. Like if he, uh, if everybody he kept, ain't buying high price shit. If he kept his mind, like Kanye could be real dangerous out here in the world right now. Yeah, they're crying and complaining because uh, Versace won't accept him and these motherfuckers looking down on him and these motherfuckers won't do this for him and Nigga, you created a billion dollar corporation with your own name on it, nigga. What the fuck you need them for? We need to stop buying that shit any motherfucking way. We need Fact. to go back to car and Fubu, nigga. Fuck. <laughs> you feel me? Fact. Nigga, where the black, where the black designers at? We need some fly shit. So we can stop fucking with these fools. Man. Real shit. That's you real talk. We wear? Create some shit we like, nigga. We, y'all know, y'all know what we rock, y'all niggas. Create some shit we like. We ain't all skinny jeans. I want some baggy shit. Bring me back some some Jabos or something. Man, <laughs> you couldn't I can't get. Go shopping nowadays. You I wear sweats all the time. Man, I feel my nuts be cramped. <laughs> when I see these niggas walking around with skinny jeans on, looking like they wearing their little sister's jeans, bro, I'm like, how the fuck and why the fuck would you even do that? Like, who who started that bullshit? <laughs> Eddie Jackson was talking shit, right? He said, uh, he, I, I forgot what he said about OGs. I said, nigga, shut up. All your youngs are dressing like Prince nowadays, nigga. <laughs> 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 and nigga said, hey, that nigga said, who was Prince? I said, Google it, nigga. <laughs> oh, wow. But and then came back and said, started laughing and said, OG, you sick, bro. <laughs> 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 he had to come back in my props like, bro, you sick. Bro. But, but all that all that matters, like, with the clothes. Like, back in the day, going to high school, bro, you couldn't wear an Adidas shirt with a pair of Nikes. You couldn't wear, you couldn't wear a white gold bracelet with a gold necklace. Like, your shit had to match. Your shit had to be clean. Your shit had to be pristine, like... But these niggas these days wear some dirty ass sweats and some motherfucking dirty nasty ass Crocs, which I don't, I don't even want to get started on the Crocs. I don't even understand that shit. But these niggas don't care. Like they don't care. They mix smacks. They they don't they don't. It's it's like it's an era of bums. I don't get it. Yeah, it's um we used to care. It was like the you know. We used to care about ourselves. We had self-respect for ourselves. We had to be fly, nigga. I ain't leaving the house if I ain't looking right. Oh, for facts. And, and the females that we like, nigga, demanded it. Nigga, if your shit ain't clean, nigga, I ain't fucking with you, nigga. You mismatched, nigga, you got what? Yeah. You got Nike and Adidas? Oh, now nah. you blame, nigga. <laughs> nigga, if I, hey, if I had on some Adidas shoes, if I had some Adidas shoes and didn't have an Adidas hat, one of the homies got an Adidas hat, nigga. One of the homies got something I can rock, nigga. Facts. That's real talk. We swapping. We, we, we gonna put this shit. We working as a team. We put this shit together. That's real I mean, talk. Nigga, me and my niggas, before we go somewhere, 
we used to be at the house coordinating each other, nigga. Here, I think you should wear this one, nigga. Hold on, nigga, this will look better on you here. Let me get that one. And we used to make, because, nigga, you in the clique, nigga. You can't have no right. boozy ass nigga in the clique. Hell no. Nah. <laughs> you can't come <laughs> out with us if you, looking right. like, if you looking like that. That's not happening. Not here, nigga. You wear these shoes, nigga. I got some shoes for you here. You feel me? Cause we got to be right. We represent, nigga. We, nigga, my name is stamped on this shit. My right. reputation's on the line, nigga. It's real. It's real. <laughs> these cats yeah, are get it. I, I think they just don't. I don't know. It's. I don't know, bro. I don't know. It's, it's the it's the artist that's influencing. Of course, artists influence the way motherfuckers dress. I can't pinpoint which artist. I, I'm gonna I'm vote and say Lil Wayne. Is the one started that skinny jean shit. But he was such a big artist at the time, nigga, that he mesmerized these niggas, you know what I'm saying? And they wanted to look like that nigga. And as these youngsters were coming out up under these niggas, the niggas that was getting money wanted to look like Lil Wayne. Yeah. So as these youngsters are coming up watching these Lil Wayne generation come through, they start taking it to the extreme. And then you got niggas like Cause Lil Wayne started rocking them fingernail polish and all that shit too. And then uh, who's the next artist that came with that feminine ass uh, shit? Uh, Young Thug. Yeah. He made it cool for a nigga to wear a dress. He made it cool for a nigga to wear a purse. He made it cool for a nigga to wear fingernails. He made it cool for a nigga's lips to shine and shit. You feel what I'm saying? Nigga back then, LL used to lick his lips, nigga. LL lips wasn't shiny, nigga. That's what the bitch is. Like, right. That's what the bitch is like, nigga. Right. <laughs> so I, it's just, it's different, man, you know. It's different, man. Well, I can, I can, I can, bro. Uh, Hold on, I'm just grabbing my shoe real quick. I'm still listening. Now, you had to adapt. Are these artists are having to adapt what's going on. Do you do you require your artists that you work with? Do you require them to be with the times, or do you do you mostly want the artists to be within themselves? I want the artists to be within themselves. I don't even want them to consider the time. I want them to create their own universe. Mm, okay. Because back then, when I was loving music, them niggas were creating their own universe. Nigga, that motherfucking public enemy. It takes a nation of millions to hold. To hold us back when you put that album on, nigga. You was in that universe. Right. That motherfucker went up. Ice Cube, Death Certificate, America's Most Wanted. When you put that motherfucker on, nigga, you in that universe. So that shit cut off. The Chronic. You in that world until that motherfucker. The last song, bitches ain't shit but hoes and chicks. Then you know the, the movie almost over. Bitches ain't shit but hoes and chicks. Then you know, damn, I gotta find another CD to put on after right. this song. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. That's. That's what music is missing. You know what I'm saying? Rap at one point was magical like Earth, Wind, and Fire and shit. Mm. Remember how magical them niggas used to be? Nigga NWA was magical like that. Yeah. So we need to bust the rhymes was magical like Teddy Pendergrass. Yeah. That's so we need to, great comparison, we need to by the way. We need to get back to that. We need mm. to create some great shit. Nigga, the credit came and changed the whole world, nigga. The credit had Asian people. Mexican people, white people, wearing khakis, wearing Converse, wearing Pendleton shirts, wearing, you feel what I'm saying? Wearing braids, smoking weed, nigga. The, the, the lowrider sales in Japan skyrocketed, nigga. That was a high commodity. I remember when the Up and Smoke tour went to Colorado. They had motherfuckers in tight jeans, cowboy boots, and hats, sea walking. You just talked to walk to my car, but I'm still on it. Man, that was some crazy <laughs> shit to see. Like, I'm like, what the fuck is going on out here? But it's like you said, the Chronic album changed the world. It let everybody yeah. know that this this thing that's been prohibited, everybody's doing. Everybody doing it. It's like when when the Chronic came out, smoking weed was like it was like it was taboo. Was like. Yeah, you wasn't cool if you wasn't doing it. Right. They was putting it before the chronic came out. We like even in movies, we smoke was real prohibited. You know what I'm saying? It was real prohibited. They might see a 
they might show a scene where you light it up, but they never really let you hit it and smoke it and shit. Nigga, after the chronic came out, nigga, they start coming with how highs and, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? All these white movies start, the white people was on there smoking weed, and blazing and bumping chronic and right. trying to act like Snoop. The niggas changed the world, you know what I'm saying? They really did. Really did. It's gonna, it's gonna take some, it's gonna take some artists to come out and just change this shit. I mean, we still had to, just a couple of years ago, we still got the Drake still doing it. But just remember a couple of years ago, we had the Kendricks, we had the Big Sean, we had the J. Cole, we had Drake. We had all these niggas at the same time. And it was like, God damn, these niggas winning Grammys and these niggas. These niggas was winning Grammys and niggas was killing the game. Right. And then all of a sudden, it just kind of died out. And then the Migos came for a minute and they was doing it like that, super big like that. Mm-hmm. And then it was in the last within the last couple of years, it just seemed like it's dying out. The star power ain't what it used to be. Mm. And it's a lot of, I, you know, I watch a lot of YouTube. There's a lot of videos on YouTube that's explaining that is is rap dying or is the demand or is the, the love for it dying? You know what I'm saying? Mm. Motherfuckers ain't, ain't, ain't fanatic like they was 10, 20, 30 years ago. You know what I'm saying? Wow. That's so we just got the it's deep. Just got to, everybody, if if we want to save the shit, we just gotta. Everybody gotta, gotta gotta go back to the lab, nigga. And, nigga, come with that shit. Right. Well, uh, shit. I'm expecting uh, Ad Capone to be that new that new staple that's gonna change the world. Which I'm gonna do my part. <laughs> I'm damn sure I'm gonna try to do my part. Okay. You well. Know what I'm saying? And, uh, that's all I can do. I, I'm just. I just do me, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm not chasing no fads. I'm not trying to, to be or sound like the next dude. I'm just in my own universe, bro. I'm trying to create my own Marvel universe, man, you know? I'm just trying to do me. When you hear my shit, you're going to be like, oh, nigga, that's ass shit right there. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's that Ad Capone right there. I know that nigga shit. When you hear my shit, I want that shit to be like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's that... That's that Ad Capone right there. Right. So that's that's just my goal, bro. You know, that's that's what I'm trying to be. I just got to be. I'm going to bring you to my world. You got bad, you got, you got bad bad. reception right now, bro, bro. I'm my bad. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can't see you, but I hear you. Oh, my, I'm in the dark. I'm in oh, my car. Okay. Like I can still hear you, but you know, I, as okay. long as you do your part to get this music thing going, bro, that's that's all I can ask for you because you you gonna be penicillin to well, this I mean, game. I feel good. I'm in a you know I'm in a good space. I feel because now I'm in control of my own shit. Right. I control my own destiny. I'm my own boss. Um, you know. Um. Yeah, I'm doing it. I'm, I'm finally doing it how I want to do it, you know. Even though the times have changed, and I would have loved to do it maybe 20 years ago where the game was lucrative and niggas like Master P and it was making three or four hundred million dollars. I wish I could have. <laughs> yeah, facts. I wish it could have been in those times. Yeah, but I mean, it's still out here to be made. These shit, these young motherfuckers still, these young rappers still are flying private jets and shit and Rocking a whole ten hundred pounds worth of jury and shit. <laughs> they get that money from somewhere. Right. <laughs> right. Shit, where the fuck I can get it from? Nigga the other day, hey, the other day money bag yo took all this money out the bank and had that shit laying all over around the house and shit. Shit, he getting that shit from somewhere. Yeah, it's it's definitely not falling off the tree, but it's coming from somewhere. Yeah, so all I need to know where a little bit of that shit at. Right. Good shit. Just give me my cut. You know, That's so, all I'm asking for. So it goes to show you, it's still a market out there. Niggas are still making money. We just niggas just gotta figure out where the fuck they're getting it from. How they doing it? Okay. Now I got a question that just popped up on here from Joseph History or Joseph Street or whatever. Can't can't I don't know how you say your name, but he yeah. asked the question: How have raps changed since back in the day, and what should we expect on your new album? How has rap changed as far as what the industry or the music? The, the, I, 
I want to say he's talking about the music. Um, how has it changed? Um, well, a lot of the young artists are just, um, uh, what can I say? A lot of young artists is trying to sound, is sounding the same, sounding similar. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, they all got the same kind of flow. It ain't even the subject matter. It ain't even what they're talking about because we all come from the hood and we all experience, you know, a lot of the same shit. It's just the way you present it. It's the way you package it, the way you put it together. You know what I'm saying? You can put it together in your own style, in your own way. Make yourself stand out. You ain't got to have the same flow and the same cadence and the same beat as the last nigga. You know what I'm saying? Right. Come with some other shit. Right. Um, what to expect on my new shit? Yeah, um, I'm evolving as, as as time goes on. I'm evolving. I'm um, fucking with different producers. Um, I'm um, I'm sticking with my sound. You know, I'm still got my style. I still got my. You know what I'm saying? I'm still me. I'm just I just know how to modernize the flow and you know put it to where it's digestible in these days and times. You mm. know what I'm saying? It's the same game. I'm still spitting the same. You're still getting real gang street game from me. Cause I'm still on the block. I'm still out with my ear to the street. I ain't out there like I used to be, but I'm on the, I'm, I'm outside. I don't stay in the house. I'm always in, in the hood. I still do shit in the hood and I still fuck with everybody. So I just, um, I just learned how to make it digestible for everybody or, or, or in a, in a, in a modern day and time. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. Well, he's saying that he meant how did AD how to ads rap change since back in the day, but you just explained that right now, so that was your answer right there, Joseph. Yeah, I just got older. I got more topics to talk about. My vocabulary is bigger now. From I mean, I'm almost fifty. Back when I was twenty, nigga, I was nigga. I'm twenty years young on the block, nigga. All I know is what's going on on the block. Right. As I progress over the decades and the years, I done traveled, I done grew, I done became a homeowner. I done, you know what I'm saying? I've went to prison. I've, you know what I'm saying? I've experienced things in my life that now I got other things to talk about. I got other subject matters. My um, my imagination is broader because I've lived longer and seen a lot of more things. So, you know, I could, you know, that's all it is. Okay, okay. Well, experience. Yeah, that that's that that wraps it up right there with the experience. Okay, well, bro, like I. I I know I've been taking a lot of your time, and I appreciate you taking some time out of your busy schedule to sit down with me here on Taking It Back Tuesdays on Hype Radio. Um, if the people want to get a hold of you, if they know somebody or somebody think they hot enough to get on your label, can you let them know how they can get a, get a hold of you? Yeah, the, I mean, the easiest way to get a hold of me is at Instagram, at Ad Capone. That's A-D-K-A-P-O-N-E. Instagram me. Um, that's probably the easiest way to hit me up, DM me. On Instagram, um, that way you can you can view some of the shit I'm doing. I got my videos on there, some of my music, some of my promotional shit. So in these days of time, I guess I think Instagram is one of the best, uh, not only promotional tools but communication tools too. Because I can go on Instagram, and just type in at Ad Capone, and I'm right there with you. you know what right. So right. yeah. Okay. Well, there's like there's 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 pluses and minuses to the game evolving like this. It really is. Now, now it's more accessible. You can hit more people yep. in just a push of a button. But you got too much, so much competition, so much saturation, so much. You know what I mean? Right. And it's not, it's not personal like it used to be with the artists and, and the fans. You know what I mean? Right. Right. I got, I got many stories of meeting some of my favorite artists. I done met Ice Cube before. I done got a story where I done met Tupac and you know what I'm saying? Mm. And those are stories that I'll never forget. I'm 50 years old and I still can tell you every detail to that night. So, um, yeah, man, you know what I'm saying? Memories are very important in a person's life. So, when you make music, create memories for people. And they'll always come back to that and be like, damn, I remember the first time I heard that nigga. I was, and that's 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 how you gain fans. Yes. You, you you 
you create a you create a bookmarking time in a person's life. That's real talk. That's real talk. That's real talk. Well, like I said, bro, I just want to say thank you for taking some time out of your busy schedule to come here on my platform. Um, it's been an honor. Uh, I still want my DJ packs to the to the to the duffel bag. For sure. No, um, hang on a little bit. After this, I'm gonna get you the information on where you can send that shit. But uh, I just want to say thank you for taking your time, bro. For me to sit up and talk with a pioneer like yourself. For me, evolving and coming up in the game the way I did, you have no idea how great this is and how, how lucky I feel and how honored I am to be able to sit here and have real conversation with you and be able to say, I need your music to play on my platform. It is a great honor for me to, to have this time with you, sir. I just want to really let you know that. Thank you, bro. I appreciate you also. But, uh, you know, that's what it is. But hang on a second because I'm going to sign off and then we gonna, I'm going to get that... that, uh, that I'm going to get you that email so I can get that bag. But uh, this is your man, Shadow. We on Hype-Radio.com. This has been another episode of Taking It Back Tuesdays. I have been talking for this past hour and some change. Wow. Uh, with Ad Capone from Totally Insane out there in EPA doing his thizzle. Uh, if y'all want to get a hold of him, he told you how to get a hold of him. That is at Ad Capone on the gram. He has his label. He's doing things. You got some real heat, some real beats. Get at him. Don't come out with no bullshit. I just want to say thank you for everybody for tuning in. Follow Hype Radio is real. You see the man right there, the pioneer, the legend, who is still out here stomping mud holes and shit. Y'all need to recognize this shit. The man really dropped gems tonight. Y'all need to really soak that shit up. But I want to say thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And uh, keep following the hype because you know the hype is real. We're going to get up out of here. Peace.